Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 74. Turn to it. Page number 74, make sure the book is in front of you so you can follow the work. Beginning with problem number 78. Let's take a look at it. If at the end of the video, after, after having watched this entire video, you found it, if you find it helpful, and if you wish to work with me, if you decide to work with me, if you wish to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, you can reach me at Kashwani Prep, that's P R E P Kashwani Prep at iCloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Number 78. Number 78 says that we have a farmer, a farmer who has cleared 90%, he has cleared 90% of his land. for planting and he's going to plant something there he has cleared 90% of his land and he's going to plant something there we are further told that 40% uh, of the land 40% of the land he's going to use for soybeans now what we need to understand here is that what we need to understand here is that it is not 40% of his total land but 40% of this 90% that he has cleared of, of the of the amount of land that he has cleared of that amount he is using 40% for soybean he is using half of the cleared land half of all the cleared land for wheat and he is using remaining 10% remaining 10% for corn and we are further told that this remaining 10% of his cleared land, the remaining 10% of his cleared land, is actually 720 acres. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is, how much land does he have altogether? Let's find out, shall we? Well, let's start from here. 10%, 10% we are told is 720. If 10% is 720, 100% would be multiply both sides by 10 and 100% would be 7200 but don't be hasty do not be hasty this is one of the answer choices but this is not the right answer this is 100% of his cleared land this is the 100% of his cleared land which is only 90% of the amount of the total land that he has so this represents this represents only 90% of his total land. The question is how much total land does he have? At this point, at this point I stop working. I stop working because answer to I see, answer to I see is 7,200. Answer to I D is 8,000. And answer to I E is something around 9,000. Okay, so listen carefully. This represents, this is 100% of the cleared land. This is 100% of the cleared land which happens to be equal equals to 90% of the total land that he has. How do we know that? Because he says so right here. He cleared 90% of his land. At this point I stop working because we know the answer is not C. C is the trap answer for those who are not paying attention. And if this represents 90% of his land, if this represents 90% of the land, obviously 100% is not going to be 9,000. You're not going to go all the way from 7,000 to 9,000 just because he has 10% more. The answer is D. The answer is D. That's all. No. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. As far as the exam is concerned, we are done. But if you want to continue this thing, it's very straightforward. Essentially what it is, is 90% of amount of his land, 90% of his total land, we know is 7,200. This work, this work is not necessary. You understand that because we already have the answer. Uh, which means 9 tenths of his land is 7,200 which means the amount of land that he has is 7,200 brings it 9 10 over there it becomes 10, 10 9 and 9 goes into 72 well 9 9 is 81 so 9 9 is 81 so this must be 8 9 
There you go, you see, 8 and 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, times the 10, that's 8,000 right there. But that was completely unnecessary, complete waste of time. It wasn't necessary. Just look at the answer choices. Just because he has 10 more percent, just because he has 10 more percent, it's not going to jump from 7,000 to 9,000. Obviously, it's 8,000. On the quick way, instead of doing all of this work, on the quick way, that we could have used to assure ourselves that that in fact is the right answer, 8,000, is because 10% of 8,000 is 800. If you take away 800 from 8,000, you're going to be left with 7,200, which is 90%. So there are all sorts of ways of saving time without actually doing the work. Okay, let's look at this one here. 79. We are told that we start, we start with three animals. And then we are told that the population doubles every month. The question is, what's the amount of population, what is the population at the at the end of 10, 10 months. So we are doing some experiment where we have three animals, they are multiplying, they are multiplying like rabbits, they double their population every month. If that were to continue, if that were to continue, how many will we, will we end up having at the end of 10 months? Now, even though we have three animals, even though we have three animals, let's start with one animal because it will make it simple. If you start with one, one will become two, Although how one would become two is not something what my biology teacher explained to me. Do you understand? But we won't go there. Uh, and then this is after one month, and then two will become four, four will become eight, and so on and so forth. They will continue to go, it will continue going like this for, for ten months. So here's, here's what's going on. So when it becomes two, there's two raised to one, that's the end of first month. This is two raised to two, that's the amount um, number we will have at the end of second month. This is what we have at the end of third month. And this is where we are starting from, 2 raised to 0. 2 raised to 0, of course any number raised to 0 is 1. This is what we start with, 0 represents the starting time, then the end of first month, end of second month, end of third month, and this continues until the end of 10th ten, month. This is, how many, this is how many we will have at the end of 10th month if we start with 1. But we are not starting with 1, we are starting with 3. So we are just going to have 3 times as much. That's all. We are going to have 3 times as many, that's all. So the answer simply is 3 times 2 raised to 10. 3 times 2 raised to 10, which happens to be answer to is D. Number 80. Number 80 says that we have 1 raised to 3. 1 raised to 3 plus 1 raised to 4 plus 1 raised to 5 plus 1 raised to 6 we are told is equal to r times 1 raised to 9 plus 1 raised to 12 plus 1 raised to 15 plus 1 raised to 18. And the question simply is what's the value of r? It's very simple, very straightforward. You simply have to recognize that we have a 9, 12, 15, and 18 for a reason. They are all multiple of 3. Can you see that? They are all multiples of 3. They have a common factor of 3. So let's take out the 3 common. So R is, if we take out, if we take out the common factor that we have, which is 3, take out the common factor of 3, which is 1 over 3 here, and you can see now this, this 1 ninth, this 1 ninth becomes 1 third. Because 3 times 3 is 9. I'm explaining too much. Then we'll have one fourth, then we'll have one fifth, because one fifth times one third will give us one fifteenth, and one sixth. And on this side, what do we have? On this side, we have the exact same thing. On this side, we have the exact same thing. I'm not going to rewrite it. it. This is the exact same thing here, and we have the same thing here. If you divide both sides by this quantity, one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth, it drops out. It drops out, and here we left with one. So 1 equals r times 1 third, r of course equals 3, r equals 3. 
R equals 3 because 3 times 1 third will give you the 1. That was number 80. Let's move on then to 81 to see what we have. Number 81. Number 81 says that X and Y X and Y are positive integers. We are further told that Y is a multiple of 5. Y, we are told, is a multiple of 5. And then we have an equation. We are told that 3X plus 4Y equals 200. The question is, X must be multiple of what? There are five choices obviously we have there. There are five choices that are given there and our job is to tell them that x must be multiple of what? In other words, x must have a uh, factor of, of one of these five numbers that are given to us in the answer choices a through e. Let's see what we can do. We know that y is a multiple of five. We know that y is a multiple of five. So let's write down y as five times number k. Some k is some number and you can see that y is a multiple of some number. So 3x plus 4 times y, which is 5k, equals 200. Equals 200. Which means that 3x plus 20k equals 200. Let's bring the 20k on that side. So 3x would equal 200. I don't like the way it's written. I hate it when things don't line up. So. 3x equals, you should have to line up properly so it looks nice, 200 minus 20k, minus 20k. Stay with me in the story, okay, because we're trying to figure out x is a multiple of what, and we're getting there, well, we, are, we are almost there. Let's take away the solve for x here, so x will equal 200 minus 20, let's take out 20 common and we'll have 10 minus k over 3. What do we find here? X must be multiple of 20 because it's 20 times some quantity. It's X is equal to 20 times this quantity which means X must be multiple of 20. And what do you suppose 20 is made up of? 20 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 4 times 5. 20 is made up of 2 times 2 times 5 which means X is a multiple of 2 x is a multiple of 4, x has to be a multiple of 4 because it's a multiple of 20, x must be a multiple of 10, x must be a multiple of, uh, there you go, it, is, it has to be a multiple of 2, must have multiple, multiple of 4, multiple of 5, and of course 10 and 20. There you go. Any one of these, this is, this is a 10, this is a 10. Obviously all of these are not going to be answer choices, only one of these one, two, three, four, five numbers that you see there, only one of those five numbers is going to be in the five, one of the five answer choices. Whichever that you see there, that's the answer. Let's look at the answer choices. We have a three, three is not here. We have a six, that's not here. We have a seven, that's not here. We have an eight, eight is not here. Ten is right, right here. There you go. X must be a multiple of 10. Of course, X is a multiple of 10 because X is a multiple of 20. If something is a multiple of 20, it must also be a multiple of 10. That's all. Eighty-two. Eighty-two. Eighty-two says which which can be which can be written as an integer. There are three quantities that they give us, and our job is to figure out which one can be written as an integer. The first one is the square root of eighty-two plus the square root of 82 whole squared. Now what they're hoping, what they're hoping that we will do here is in our haste, because people are always gung-ho about doing algebra, that you'll end up using the formula of a plus b whole squared, a plus b whole squared, 
and you will expand that thing and try to solve it that way. If we do that, you will never get anywhere. All we have to do here is this, look. Because the reason we don't have to do that, the reason we don't have to do that, because what we, what we need to understand is that algebra is a language. And just like any other language, the symbols have meanings. A, when we say A plus B, a, what, when we say A plus B, what we're saying here is that this is a different quantity than that one. That's why there's A and B. That's why we use a different symbol. Here, that is not the case. They are the same quantities. They are the same quantities. It's not A plus B. It's just 2A. It's just 2 times A. So this simply is 2 times root 82 whole squared. There we go. And now we can open it very easily. It will simply be 2, two squared is 4 and square of root 82 is simply 82. There you go. So the question here is which can be written as an integer or statement 1 can certainly be statement 1 can certainly be written as an integer because it's simply 4 times 82. Let's look at statement 2. Statement 2 says 82 times root 82. 82 times root 82. Let's see what we can do with root 82. Root 82, if we, if we divide, if we try to factorize it, it is simply 2 times 41. So what we hear is, what we hear, what we have here is 82 times root 82, which is 2 times 41. 2 times 41. As you can see, there's not much we can do. We cannot go, in, we cannot break either one of them any, anymore because they are both prime numbers. 2 is a prime number and so is 41. We can't really do anything. This quantity is not going to be an integer. Before we worry about whether or not it's a perfect square, before we even worry about whether or not it's a perfect square, we can't even break it anymore. So this is not going to be an integer. And if this is not an integer, then, then some number that is not an integer times 82 is not going to be an integer. This does not equal an integer. So 2 does not work. Let's look at 3. Well, 3 is very straightforward actually. 3 is almost silly. Root 82 times root 82 on the top over 82. That's just silly. Root 82 times root 82 is just 82. Over 82 and that's just 1. So the answer is, it says which, of, which can be written as, as an integer. The answer is 1 and 3. 1 and 3. Statement 1 and statement 3 can be written as an integer and that's your answer choice E. Let's, go, let's look at the next one, number 83. Number 83. Number 83 is an interesting one and before we do the work here, I would like you to watch this video. Search for work time problems and then and then put then put down my name. Whenever you look whenever you're looking for certain certain topic in mathematics, always put down my next to it, my name next to it. It'll make it easier to pop it up. Because otherwise you will find several people doing the same thing that I'm doing obviously. And if you don't want to go that route, look for if you don't want to go that route, look for basic math day 111 through 125. Or rather, 111 through 115. 131 through 135. 196 through 200. That is only that is only if you need help getting better at work time problems. Work time problems appear regularly in the exam, and if you're a little rusty. If it takes you a little bit longer to solve the work time problem, if you practice these 15 problems, it will help you. They are arranged in order of difficulty. The first five are easy, the next five are medium, the last five are difficult. Let's take a look at this one. It says that A, again, make sure the book is in front of you, as I always remind you, because the way I phrase the question is not how it is written in the book. 
I phrase the question, I take the gist of the problem and simply put down the summary of it. They make it a lot more elaborate and they make it a lot more annoying in the, in the book. But read it so you get used to the language. A can do, A can do half the job, half a job in three hours we are told. B can do two thirds of the same job of the same job in six hours. So A takes three hours to do half the job, B that takes six hours to do two thirds of the job. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is how long together? How long together? If they work together, how long will they take? Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. So here is our A and here is our B. A we are told can do half the job in three hours. A can do half the job in three hours, which means A can do the whole job in six hours. A must be able to do a whole job in six hours. A does not equal six. A can do, that's what I'm trying A can do the whole job in six hours. Let's just, instead of putting down A equals six, A can do the whole job in six hours. Let's see what we can do here. We are told that B can do two third in six hours. Stay with me in the story. If you can do two third in six hours, that implies that you should be able to do one third in three hours. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you take it, if you take, if you do two thirds in six hours, you should be able to do one third in three hours, and that in turn implies that you should be able to do three thirds in nine hours. Three thirds is just the whole job. So this guy takes nine hours to the job, and this guy takes six hours to the job. Are you with me so far? Six and nine. The trick after that is once you once you figure out how long it takes for one person to do the entire job for each individual. The trick next trick, the trick now is to find the least common multiplier. Least common multiplier. It doesn't, technically it doesn't need to be the least, but the smaller it is, the less work we will do. The least common multiplier of six and nine, let's find out, this, this is how we find it. Least common multiplier, LCM, it is generally known. The common, common factor here is three, so we have a two and a three. Three times three is nine plus two, nine times two is 18. Let, let both of them work 18 hours. Let both of them work 18 hours. Now as I said, it doesn't have to be least. Instead of 18, if we had used 180 hours, it will still do the job, or 18 million for that matter, as long as some multiple of, as long as some multiple of 6 and 9. But we want to find the smallest possible. It, it, it needs to be some multiple of 6 and 9, but we choose to have the least multiple because it's, it's less work least common multiplier, LCM. So let them work 18 hours. Okay, so here, here the story begins. In 18 hours, in 18 hours, how many jobs do you suppose A will be able to do? A takes six hours to do a job. In 18 hours, A can do three, because it takes six hours. And similarly, in 18 hours, B can do, B takes nine hours. So B can do two, two jobs, which means, Together, which means together, they can do, they can do, he does three hours, he does two, two hours, they can do five jobs in 18 hours. They can do five jobs in 18 hours. I need the room so I have to raise this now. That's it, we're done. If they do, if they do five jobs in 18 hours, we don't want them to do five jobs. We, we just want them to do one job. If they, can, if, if they do five jobs in 18 hours, they should be able to do one job in 18 over five hours. 18 over five hours, 18 over five hours, if you divide by five, is three with the remainder of three, three and three fifth. Three and three fifth hour is your answer. Three and three fifth is the answer. And you will find questions similar to these in these videos. Just just type in this this word here, just type in basic math, put down Keshwani and then basic math, day 111, watch the first five video, and so on and so forth. Once you, once you get a hang of it, you will see that they are very simple, very straightforward. Number 84.
number 84 says which point which point lies on kx plus 3y equal to 6 for, for every possible value of k. So we are given five points. Our job is to look at one point for which uh, the one point that lies on this line for all possible values of k, not just some value of k. For example, answer choice A says, answer choice A says 1, 1. Okay, watch what happens here. The point 1, 1, the only way, the only way this point 1, 1 will fall in this line is if we have one specific, one particular value of k. And we're going to do it out just to show you what, what that value of k needs to be. If x is equal to 1, we'll get k, k times 1, plus 3 times y, y is 1 also, which is just 3 equals 6. As you can see, if k happens to be 3, if, if and only if, if and only if k happens to be 3, this point will lie on that line. Otherwise it will not. Our job is to find a point that lies on this line for all possible values of x, uh, all possible value of k rather, for every possible value of k. A is not the answer. Let's look at B. Let's look at B. B says, B says 0, 2. Again, if you put that in value, k, kx plus 3y, we are told has to equal 6, 0, 2. 0 times k is 0, plus 3 times 2. There we go, that satisfies it. This satisfies it. Not only it satisfies the equation, but, but this tells us that because k drops out, because this guy, the x coordinate, because this x, co x coordinate of this point is 0, 0 times k is 0, k drops out. And since k drops out, it plays no role and therefore it will hold for all values of k. All values of k. This particular point, 0, 2, will fall on this line no matter what the value of k is. Of course it will fall on this line no matter what the value of k is because x coordinate is 0 and therefore it drops, this term drops out. It, it term drops out. So whichever you find there, it, it, it will do the job. Do you understand? It will, it will apply for all values of k, no matter what the k is. k could be 3, k could be 5, k could be 25, it doesn't matter what the value of k is. It will always satisfy it because it's, no matter what the value of k is, it's just k times 0. The answer is b. The answer is b. Now very quickly, very quickly now, we'll solve, we'll solve c, d and e just to show you what the values of k, k needs to be in order for those to be true. For example in c, C says 2, 0. C says 2, 0. 2, 0. Now the y is k, y is 0, which means 2, 0. 2 times, 2 times k, so it's just 2k, plus this is 0, uh, therefore it's just equals 6 and k equals 3. This point will only lie on the line if k is equal to 3. Similarly, if you work out the d, for D you will find that it will only be true if K happens to be negative 4. For E it will only be true if K happens to be negative half. If K happens to be anything other than that, that then, then that given point will not lie on the line. Answer is B. That was the end of that page. We'll stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll do some uh, data sufficiency problems, we'll pick up uh, where we left off yesterday on, in data sufficiencies and we'll continue our story from there. If you wish to get hold of me, send me an email as I said before at kashpaniprep at icloud.com and we'll see what we can do. Alright, bye now.